we got the diff in so you could see it it's all bolted in tight so it's the next day after the diff install as you can see the hellcat behind me and the rt the install went fairly smoothly it was way easier than when we did it in the charger in this garage and we were on our backs if you do have access to a lift use it to your advantage the beautiful thing is is for the newer dodge cars and by newer i mean 2015 and forward chargers and challengers you don't have to tune for this gearing change either long story short you'll be able to drive the car watt pulls are a different story you may need a tune some people do some people don't the higher horsepower cars that are have super small pulleys in the 85 uh, may benefit from a tune so that it doesn't sneak up on that one to two and and two to three shift too quickly What's going on guys, Donovan here. Today's video, we are installing a 309 differential, 309 limited slip, obviously, because I'm not gonna put an open diff in this car. So this car came stock with a 262. I'll show you guys over here. I have the uh, crate, the 309 in it. I haven't opened it yet. I probably should have done that before we disassembled the car. You can see here all nice on the lift. The, with the feedlock welds on the S71. So I've done this a couple times before now, but uh, dad's helping me out tonight. So first thing we did, take off the rear part of the exhaust. We've already, and I haven't showed you guys this yet, but I have a one piece aluminum drive shaft from the drive shaft shop here. We've unbolted it. Sometimes they're, the bolts on the top of the drive shaft are a little difficult to get to. So I recommend Putting the car, use the neutral safety lever thing in the center console to put the car in neutral and rotate it over until the bolts are easily accessible and then put your parking brake on. And you'll have to do that a couple times when you're reassembling the thing as well. Uh, obviously unplug your exhaust actuators. Sucky part now is we're onto the diff. So there are two large bolts we have to get to these bolts that bolt into the cradle as well, or the subframe, something like that. And then wrestling the axle, I'm probably making you guys a little bit sick, sorry for moving so much, um, but wrestling these axles out is the worst because I, I don't really want to take out the like caliper on the other side so that I can kind of move that hub a little bit and take one of the axles out separately. So you kind of just have to lower the diff and start wrestling it <laughs> until you get the axles all out and and in so i'll show you guys the process as it goes all right guys so just a little update the diff is out it's over here leaking fluid on the floor as you can see the 262 limited slip differential so let's go also i'm doing an oil change so that's why i have all this stuff here let's open this up It's already almost open to be honest. Let's see. There she is. This one's packaged a lot better than the first one I ever bought. The first one I ever bought with like, it just came in this box with like none of that foam and it was thrashed. Also this one came on like a mini pallet. You can see. 309 limited slip. So we're gonna get this thing back on. Also, don't forget to remove the breather and put it on uh, this little nub at the back. So uh, I'll show you guys that really quick. This little weenie. As with most jobs, this is like five times easier if you have a lift. So basically what we did was we put it, the diff on this transmission jack and we held it in place so that we could remove the two bolts that connect up here which are these guys i showed you before they kind of went in up there like that and that way when we removed these it wouldn't drop and then we we're able to kind of just continue backing those out while at the same time scooting the diff forward because you don't there's you can't really pull these bolts out because of the 
um, gas tank. So we're gonna do the opposite thing when we put the new diff in. All right, guys, we got the diff in. So you could see it, it's all bolted in tight. It's got the breather up way up here at the top. Uh, right now, my dad's putting in the drive shaft. I should probably help him with that. So another quick update. I know it's gonna be a little difficult to see. The iPhones are pretty good in low light though. But so I put a drive shaft loop on. You can see it kind of mounts to this transmission cross member. The old ones I've seen, like the previous model, I think went like up here in this lip, but for some reason they mount underneath now. And so it makes it a little easier because you don't have to like drop this cross member a little bit and kind of wiggle this thing in that edge between the transmission and this K member brace thing. And then of course it loops over the front of the drive shaft. So that being said, drive shaft is torqued on to this 309 diff it looks all clean just well kind of old one's still over there so now we're gonna throw on the exhaust as you guys can see completely stock exhaust i've done no muffler deletes or anything i kind of like how quiet the car is so i might leave it that way i don't know we'll see the borla attack sound nice but uh yeah this is where we are at so it's the next day after the diff install, as you can see the Hellcat behind me, RT. The install went fairly smoothly. It was way easier than when we did it in the charger in this garage and we were on our backs. So if you do have access to a lift, use it to your advantage. It's still possible to do without a lift, but it's like, like I said, it can get annoying when you're doing it on your back and you don't have all the tools accessible and stuff. One thing I forgot to mention in the install is um, don't forget to top off the fluid on the diff. Um, sometimes they're a little bit low. Sometimes they don't have any fluid in them. If you buy the diff used, they probably don't have fluid in them. The person you bought it from probably emptied it. So don't forget to do that. And then when you first install the diff, you want to go easy on it. Uh, for a few hundred miles make sure the fluid you have is the correct weight and it has the limited slip additive from Mopar I didn't show the filling process because if you guys can install a diff I'm sure you're able to fill it up with fluid the process is pretty straightforward identical to the install process on the Charger RT so if this video wasn't detailed enough check out my channel for uh, another video on the same topic but just different car and once again, this process is the same for Chargers and Challengers. The beautiful thing is, is for the newer Dodge cars, and by newer I mean 2015 and forward, Chargers and Challengers, you don't have to tune for this gearing change either, because I went from a 262 to a 309. Both cars, you didn't technically need a tune. I hear that sometimes with the Hellcats, they can come up on the early shifts a lot faster with the 309, and sometimes you can hit the rev limiter, but, but to actually drive the car out of the shop, you don't need a tune. Long story short, you'll be able to drive the car. Watt pulls are a different story. You may need a tune. Some people do, some people don't. The higher horsepower cars that are, have super small pulleys and the 85 uh, may benefit from a tune so that it doesn't sneak up on that one to two and, and two to three shift too quickly. But uh, with that being said, um, hopefully this video was helpful. Look forward to a first impressions video. And with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you're interested in the Hellcat you're interested in the RT. I think more people are interested in the RT because it's more of an accessible car and I completely understand that. Um, so if you're interested in either of them and you want to follow the build progress on them, uh, remember to hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys for your support and I'll see you on the next video. Peace out.